Do you ever struggle to fit in? Now, you will have your close friends who just totally get you, but when you're out and about with certain social groups, do you ever feel that no matter how hard you try to gain rapport, you just feel like you're making a fool of yourself? Or maybe that you're surrounded by idiots? Now, some people do seem to be naturally popular, whilst others can't seem to get it right, no matter how much effort they make to fit in. And in some cases, the harder they try, the worse it gets. So in my series of videos, I want to be showing you two things. Firstly, I want to help you understand why one person or social group can make you feel like they are totally honoured to have you with them. Whilst when with another person or social group, they make you feel like you really shouldn't be there. And secondly, I want to show you how you can read other people and adapt what you do to gain compliment and not conflict. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Sue Blackhurst and I bring the world of social psychology into everyday language. So if you're fascinated by people and you want to learn more about yourself and the relationships that you have with the people around you, then subscribe to my channel now as my videos are all about you. So this is the first of a series of videos that I want to go through to help you build better relationships. This is relationships with people that you know. This is about your partner. It could be your siblings, it could be your children or your parents. It could be friends, family, or even the colleagues at work. So there's gonna be a whole set of videos that I'm going to run through because the content available for this subject is gonna take me months and months to cover. So watch this video as a starter, and then each week we will build on this. They will be standalone videos, but if you can watch the series, you'll gain so much more from it. Okay, so let's get into our behavior profiling, because we're gonna learn here about people, how they behave, what they do, about you and your behavior, and that will help us learn where we get compliment and conflict, and down the line as we go over the weeks, we'll learn what we can do to help build those relationships. So let's start off, first of all, because this is really just introducing it. Four different types of behavior. We've got red, yellows, greens, and blues. Now, we use colors because colors are just a great depictor when you think about uh, people and behaviors. Because if I said to you somebody was fiery red, that may give you a whole host of images as to what that person might be like. So we can first of all divide these four colours into two separate sides. Our reds and yellows will be one type of behaviour, which you will know clearly, and our blues and our greens will be another type. One side we known, uh, are known as introverts, and one side is known as extrovert. So which way do you think it might be? Well, if I think again of fiery red, what would you depict as a fiery red person? Are they an introvert? So they're more milder, they're a little bit calmer, they're a bit more reserved they probably speak a little bit quieter, a little bit slower. They probably have a little bit less confidence in making eye contact for long periods of time. And they prefer a little bit more of the back seat. They wanna be kept out of things. They don't want to be center stage. Whereas the extrovert on the other side, these are people that say, bring it on, I'm here. They want people to know when they walk into a room, they ooze confidence, they ooze volume. And these are the people that, you know, you know they're there. So reds, yellows, greens, blues, which way do we think it is? Well, reds and yellows, yes, they are our extrovert, which means blues and greens are our introverts. Okay, so we have two different types of behavior. Reds and yellows, big, out there, you know where they are. Blues and greens they tend to be people that are a little bit more reserved. Okay, so at the moment, you may see where you can fit yourself on either of those two sides, very early days. We now have two different types of behavior because our blues and our reds also have a type and our yellow and green also has a type. One type we know as task-focused behavior on one type we know as people-focused behavior. So let's go back to our reds. Would you think a red person is more direct, more forceful, and more, you know, they're people that say, this is what I want and I want it now? Um, or are they more people-focused? It's how are you, are you okay, how things are going? Where do you think they would be? Well, your blue and your red, these are what we call task-focused type behaviors. Our green and our yellow, these are our people-focused can't spell there what we're doing right okay our people focus so now what we have is four different types of behavior our reds being task focused extroverts our yellows being people focused extroverts 
our greens being people-focused introverts and our blues being task-focused introverts. So there's four different types of behavior. However, when you think about people in the world, there are more than four different types of behaviors that we see and we exhibit. So how can we fit them all onto these four quadrants? Well, let's take the word red again. Let's change the word red to the word chair. So if I asked you, how many chairs do you think there are in the world? Are there tens, hundreds or thousands? Well, you would probably say, yeah, there's thousands of different types of chair in the world. But if I said to you, here I'm going to present you with a chair you've never seen before, would you know what it was? And you go, yeah, I recognise it's a chair. Would you therefore know what to do with it? Yeah, sit on it. Well, understanding human behaviour is actually the same sort of thing. Because once you understand all the different types of red behaviours that there are, all the different types of things that a red person exhibits, what they want from life, um, how they, um, what makes them happy, what frustrates them, what upsets them, once you understand all those things, anybody that you meet and you identify red characteristics, you will therefore know how to deal with them, how to interact with them, how to behave with them. You will know what frustrates them. You will know what winds them up and annoys them. You will know how to build up more productive relationships. Also, if you are a red person, you will also begin to learn what upsets other people, what you do to other people that frustrates them. So we're gonna look at all these things over the next few weeks. So at the moment, what we're saying is, there will be a whole host of behaviours that fit into that red quadrant. Um, and we're going to learn about all of those as we go along. Um, so here we have, um, okay, we have our introverts and our extrovert. You're not one or the other, okay? You don't have a fixed point, but you do have the ability to shift. We all hear about the word behaving, shifting our behaviours. Well, we have something called behavioural shift. So let's say we have 0% of introversion versus extroversion. Then let's say we have 50% and 100%. There's no better or worse with this. All we have is difference, okay? An introvert versus an extrovert. There's no better or worse, right or wrong. We only have difference. So if we have somebody here, and let's say this person is, let's say they are, you know, 30% on the introvert scale, okay? So they are introverted, they're not as introverted as somebody who would measure say 10 or 20 but they're still fairly mild they're still fairly um they still want really to be kept a little bit on you know out of the public eye these are the people that you know if you go out you at a party or in a restaurant they're quite happy just sitting at the end of the table they're quite happy not being the center of attention so that is what we call their their measure however we all have the ability to sort of Move, don't we? We don't stay static all the time and we go, that's me and that's where I am every day. So we have a 10%, 5% either way behavioural shift. So this person could go down to 25 to 35. So we now have this bracket here that what we call that is our comfort zone. That is where we like to be. That is where this person feels that they are most comfortable and that they're happy whatever situation they are in. So if we take this person and we then ask them to be in a situation or a place outside their comfort zone, they have to try very hard to, in the first instance, adapt their behaviour. So they can adapt their behaviour yet another further 5% either side. So they're not going to go down to 20% or 40%. And now we have a second area here. So this second area is what we call our adapted zone and that simply means that we are being asked to adapt our behavior down to the circumstances that we find ourselves in so we would adapt our behavior for a job interview we would adapt our behavior meeting let's say you know boyfriend girlfriends parents for the first time we would adapt our behavior when going to meet school teachers or a parents evening and um, we'd also adapt our behaviour if maybe going to a big celebration, a massive party, and we need to up our level of uh, extroversion. So we have our, our measure, we have our comfort zone, and we have our adaptive zone. So we're able to move and shift what we do very slightly either side. 
but you now take this introvert and you place that introvert somewhere let me get a different color for this you place this introvert somewhere outside their adapted zone so we're not asking them to behave at 60 percent this means we're taking an introvert and we're saying to them oh by the way i want you to go on stage i want you to make a very lively presentation and i want you to speak to the rest of the organization or maybe we're at a party or a club or something and someone sat down quite happily and then people say let's go and dance and they go no, 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 i'm quite happy i just want to sit here come on get up and have a dance have a life no 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 i'm really happy just where i am i'm not saying introverts don't dance i'm just saying this person wants to sit down we're taking them to a level which is outside their comfort and adapted zone this is now placing them into the third zone which is what we call our stress zone now your stress zone is something that you can quite happily dip in and out of as long as it's for a very short space of time and as long as you can revert back into your adapted and then your comfort zone very quickly afterwards because if we're taking this introvert and we're constantly placing them with groups of people and with friendship groups where these people their behavior is far more on this um, um, extrovert line they're slowly going to feel that they're trying to behave in that way but it's causing them levels of anxiety because it's making them feel it's not the true them and therefore they're saying basically i'm pretending to be somebody that i'm not and this works in reverse you can have somebody placed on the extrovert zone and we're asking them to sit down and be amongst people who again are different to who they are and they're they're feeling um, false because they're behaving a way that's neither natural or comfortable to them. So we have the introvert and extrovert, that's one level. You will have a measure and you will be able to adapt it. You will be able to then revert back to your comfort zone or you are placed into a stress zone. Now, we also have the vertical measure and it works in exactly the same way. So you can have somebody who's got zero, 50% and 100%. So we're taking somebody who is say 90% task focused. Now this is somebody who goes, this is what I want. When's it happening? Do it now. Let's go here. I want that. What's going on? You know, you're out in a restaurant and the waiter brings the food and they go, what's this? You know, they're just on it. <laughs> they know what they want. They're very forceful. They're very direct. And that's somebody very high task focused. All these things have a place, no right or wrong, we just have difference. And then we go down to the people focus. Now people focus, they just love life, people, being happy. Let's make the world a lovelier place. So as much as they're out there going, let's all be friends, let's all be lovely, their focus isn't necessarily gaining a result. Now this result could be, you know, getting the table in a restaurant, pushing forward to the bar if you're trying to get to a bar to get drinks. These are people that, you know, again, sit back and they will talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, but actually you sometimes feel that there is no substance. So you will again have whatever you are, you'll have a measure, you'll have your adapted, you'll have your stress, and um, you'll have your, um, you have your comfort zone, you have your adapted, anything out of it will go and be your stress zone. It works in exactly the same way. So what we're saying here is, and this is what we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks. We have four different behavioral quadrants and you will have a mixture of all four. And this mixture will be personal to you. But where we have read, you will have a measure of introversion and extroversion and task and people. So somebody could be 90% extroversion and 90% task focused, that could be your behavioral point that tells me something about you and that's red somebody could be 60 percent extroversion and let's say about 70 percent task they are still red but they have a different type of red behavior but they are still red and once we understand these behavioral types that will tell me and tell you it will tell you so much about who you are, what you want from life, how I need to speak to you, um, how we interact, where we need to go, what I need to get you, what we need to do when we're there. We can learn these things about all these behaviors. 
We'll learn about you and where you are, and we'll learn about the people that you know. And by the time we've completed this, yes, you will be able to go out, you will see people, and you will be able to read their behavior, adapt your own behavior to get compliment and not conflict, and you will be able to build much better relationships. Well, I hope you found this interesting so far. This is just week one of a whole series. So do subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss each video because remember, we're talking about you.